I recently traveled to Anaheim, California to attend North America's largest renewable energy trade show, RE+. And while I was there, I stopped in the Anchor Solex booth to learn more about their home energy solution, the X1. And near the end of the video, I'm gonna be sharing my thoughts on the X1 and why I think this might be a better solution than the Tesla Powerwall 3 for most of you all. But first, let's learn a little bit more about the system and take a look at what I learned during my visit. My name is Michael, I'm a solutions manager at Anchor here. So I'm gonna to talk to you guys a little bit about our home residential storage energy solution here. So this is our Anchor Solix X1. We've got batteries here on the bottom. Each one of these is five kilowatt hours. The inverter is right here on the top. It's got the pretty display. So the output of this top inverter, six kilowatts. Okay. And everything here is parallel. So you can have multiple stacks next to each other. You can expand the system, it's all modular. How many of these inverters can we have? Six. Six, okay. So you can have 36 kilowatts of output. That's okay. Measured. And how many batteries per inverter? You can do six, six okay. per inverter. Okay, so a total of 36 each way? Yes. Right. So 36 kilowatts with yes. 36 batteries. Yes, yeah, so you, you can do to. two stacks of three and then you tie it in under one inverter. So is this five, five kilowatts? Five kilowatt hours, yeah. yep. Okay. So what, you're talking 30? Kilowatts for each one of these. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Is lot. What is the so the micros? So this is our new solution that we're just unveiling this week. So this is our anchor anchor micro inverter, and it's two. It's a two in one. So it's got two separate MPPTs. So it's two panels can tie into this one micro inverter. So it's not as expensive to yep. install on your right. roof. I believe what size it, panels can you use? Oh yeah. Um, it's like seven hundred. I think seven hundred and fifty watt is on the, each MPPT. Yeah, it'll uh, divide it by two. So oh, divide it by two. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And now does this connect directly to this? How yeah. does this system work? So that the whole thing, so the whole system, microinverters and the X1 are tied together in this thing here that we call the backup controller. This is our backup controller, and it's the termination point for all of the connections in the system. So you've got the grid, you've got the two potential uh, terminals for your for your home here. You've got two potential storage ter termination points for the batteries, and then you've got a generator port and a PV port. What size generator? What's the max generator? 100 amps. 100 amps, all right. So every every port you see here is 100 amps. Okay. And it's 200 here, and you can do 200 here, potentially, if you want to back up the full home. Okay. The normal mode is called self-consumption. Yep. So that's going to prioritize the PV going to the home. Okay. And so if you have excess solar at that point, so if you're able to power your home completely with your with your PV, any extra is going to get sent to the battery. Okay. That's, yeah. the, that's the standard operating. Yep. And For that's sure. what like 99% of people usually leave the system in is self-consumption. So is this box uh, UL listed, everything UL listed? Yes, everything's UL listed. Okay. 9540, 9540A for, for the modules and okay. the inverter here. Is it uh, outdoor rated too? What? Is it outdoor? I'm sorry. Yeah, was no, it no. outdoor rated too? Yeah, NEMA 4. Okay, NEMA 4. NEMA 4. Um, so, on this as well? Yes. Every All of this can be installed outside. This microinverter is NEMA 6. The backup controller, inverter, and the modules are NEMA 4. So you can install these outside. Uh, I always recommend, even though the temperature rating, uh, which is something else I should talk about, these will operate from negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit to 131. Yeah, that's a good range. Yeah, it's yeah. great. But that I still recommend not to install in the south-facing uh, uh, south yeah. wall yes. outside because it's just going to get hit by the sun all day. It's going to bake it. It's going to bake it. You don't want to risk because when this thing operates, it does heat up. So yeah, and, for sure. Yeah. So it will go over 131 degrees if it's cooking in the sun all day and charging or discharging. So what happens when it does it? Does it automatically kick off? Yeah, it'll click off, it'll protect itself, and it'll wait for the temperature to come back below a certain set point. Okay. Now just have fans automatically start cooling. Yeah, it's down. got cooling. So okay. we've, uh, you can't see it here, but there's uh, aluminum heat sinks on the back okay. of all this, and then fans to blow the heat sinks as they as they heat up. Now, do they have the same type of fail safe for these as well? Yeah, so the, temp the temperature settings are here. I can't remember off the top of my head. The temperature settings are a lot higher in these. Yeah. Because they're obviously going to be in the roof, yeah. underneath your panels, cooking like an oven. <laughs> under, under yeah. <laughs> but these will shut off as well if the temperature is exceeded to protect themselves. Okay. And good. they will turn back on when the temperature gets back below its threshold. Right. Does it have an indicator? Is this, this goes behind the panel, right? So you put it on, yeah. the, on the racking itself. Yep. So does it have like a green or red light indicator on this one that we can see like if you were an installer? No, so no, it does not. 
um, but the way that you'll test it is we have our commissioning system, which is back there behind you. Okay, we'll and, take a look at that in a second yeah. for sure. And so the and then you're able to monitor the whole system from there. So it'll run through a system check after. So when you get everything all plugged in, and you there'll be a system check that you run, and it's going to test the whole system, put it through its paces, make sure everything's operating, everything's hooked up correctly, okay. and it will find any points that aren't properly hooked up, and will say, hey. Uh, like maybe failed communication with battery one, or it'll say panel three and one, panel one and two non-responsive. So maybe the installer might have messed up a connection okay. up there. It'll it'll point them exactly to where they need to go. So does this have over the line communication, or is this Wi-Fi, or it's Zigbee, 4G? Zib, Zigbee dongle, two point okay. five gigahertz. Okay. okay. So you'll have you'll have a non-outdoor rated little router that you'll probably put in your garage, like close to this thing. Okay. Like close to your roof, but not outside. Yeah. And it communicates wirelessly with that. Okay. So we've got two different things here. We've got the homeowner app, which looks like this. It's gonna, the screen's gonna cycle through all of the displays. So like here's the, all of what the micro inverters are. Here's the standard display, panel display. So you can set up your own array. Yes. Okay, all right. Yes. So your own layout, have you have it. Yep, you've got your generation graphs here. You can switch the time that you can look at. Yeah, so energy, so energy production, battery, battery production. They track it all. This all so this is this M one or M I? M I micro M I, micro, micro inverter. That's okay. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. And so this is what our uh, installer portal looks like. So they can monitor their whole fleet. Okay, yeah. Um, and also, like, so this yeah. is just what it's going to look like. You've got a map so, like, the installers can see everywhere that they've installed in the state that they operate in, their total number of systems. Green is good. Red would mean there's a fault. And offline, that just means you don't know. Like, it, the system's not talking, so we don't know if it's in a bad state or a good state. Yeah. But it probably needs to be investigated. It just ran through the dongle, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. So the do the dongle is for the micro inverters, but the actual the backup controller has a Wi-Fi chip in it. Okay. So that is what one of the steps the uh, installers will have is to get that thing connected to the homeowner's Wi-Fi. Okay. So my question is again back on the X1 on the solution. Do you have to have the micro inverter in that system, or can no. you just use the the It'll inverter work. itself. You can just use the inverter itself. So okay. you could. So if you don't have solar, um, you could charge the battery off the grid if you wanted to. Okay. But or and we're also brand agnostic on the micro inverters as well. So it's AC coupled. So we don't care what the branding is on that micro inverter. Okay. So right. it could be Enphase, Solar Edge. Oh, so you're just creating a AC coupled system. An AC coupled system, okay. but. Isn't the inverter got DC input as well? It so, does not. Oh, it does, this one doesn't. Yeah, we are not DC coupled. Okay, okay. Yeah. So it's strictly AC. Strictly coupled. AC coupled. Okay. Coupled. okay. Yep. Yeah, that's good to clear that up because I was even yeah. thinking that was a DC and then AC kind of coupled. No, no, no. no. It is just... I built systems like that where it's <laughs> yeah. both of them. And like because and because it's AC coupled, there's no like wires getting crossed on like what brands we accept or not. There's no communication yep. that's necessary between different products. It's just because it's all AC. All right. You have the total battery capacity. That's the that the whole fleet has. So they could have they can see all of the kilowatt hours they've installed. They've got the map where they can see all the locations of all the homes that they've installed at. And then they've got the individual system data they can see. So they can see all the solar that's being generated, how much grid is being pulled, what's the battery uh, capacity and charge and discharge at for their fleet, and then the energy consumptions of the homes. That's and awesome. this screen is identical to the if you want to look at an individual system. Okay. So there, this is like the whole fleet view, okay. and then they could click on a on a site. Will that be over here? The list of yes. Yeah, so you'd you'd have a system list. So you could either look. You got to do it by the site map, or you could do it by a system. Oh, list. okay. Uh, that's so they awesome. can they can click on the map and say, okay, I know this guy lives at one two three lane, and they go click that site, and then this will pop up, but it will only display the information for that site. Okay, that's awesome. I see that you got a UX design award. I used to design apps, so I know that's. That's important. Yeah, I know. It's they put a lot of time and effort into making the app actually look as sleek as it functions. Yeah. So when we're looking around the booth, each one of these are the same. Yes. Just so I'm not confused because yes. I know there's different displays for people to see. So every when we see that X1, there is no X1 doing one thing and X1 doing another. Yeah. It's all the same. Okay. So yeah, it's all one thing. Because I've had that question kind of come up, yeah. so I just want to get that answered. Yeah. They all they do all operate independently, which is the advantage of them being tied in parallel. So it's important. It's an important thing to talk about. So 
if that if that battery stack was tied in series, if there was ever a issue with one of the packs, the whole system would have to go offline. But because yep. they're all in parallel, they can operate independently, they can charge independently, they can discharge independently. And if one of them has an error and has to shut off for whatever reason, you're going to be down five kilowatt hours of capacity until that error gets resolved. Yep. But you still have the remainder of your stack. So that goes hand in hand with the microinverters. Microinverter panel goes down yep. and keep Yeah, keep that, going. that way yeah, one panel can go down and the microinverter can still out, output the yeah. other panel. That's awesome. All right, thanks, sir. Yeah, right, appreciate it. No problem. And I had a great time at the show and explored a lot of new technologies, but let's review what I learned about the X1 and discuss the key differences between the Solex X1 and the Tesla Powerwall 3. Then you can decide which would be the best choice for your needs. And as you can see, the X1 is a great solution for anyone with an existing solar system or looking to build a new solar system, especially those with systems already using microinverters and are looking for a backup solution. If you already have an AC system powered by microinverters, this is the clear choice because the Tesla Powerwall 3 is not compatible with your system. And the beauty of the X1 is that it doesn't matter whether you're using the Anchor Solex microinverters the in-phase microinverters, or even the Hoy Miles microinverters. It doesn't matter which microinverters that you use. Now, it is recommended that if you're building a new system that you, of course, use all Anchor Solex products from your batteries to your inverter to your microinverter so you have one point of contact if there would ever be a problem or your warranty is covered by one company. So that is definitely something to keep in mind, but it does not matter if you already have an existing solar system with microinverters using Enphase or Hoy Miles or some other microinverter company, you can hook this directly to the X1. The X1 is more modular than the Tesla Powerwall 3. You can customize the output from 3 kilowatts to 36 kilowatts and the backup capacity between 5 kilowatt hours and 100 and 80 kilowatt hours. With the Powerwall 3, you're forced to expand 13.5 kilowatt hours, which may result in unnecessary cost. With the X1, you can scale your needs as you grow without overspending. With microinverters, you can achieve all day power. They perform better in low light environments and they have a low startup voltage, which maximizes the power generation. So if you're looking to build a new system, this is certainly an option to explore. The Anchor Solex X1 integrates seamlessly with existing fuel backup generators with an insane switchover time of zero milliseconds. That's what I said, zero milliseconds, which is absolutely insane. In short, the X1 is more modular, compatible, and a great solution for AC coupled systems. And I would love to hear your thoughts on this, so be sure to chime in and let me know which system you think would work best for you. If you have any questions or concerns, leave those in the comments as well, and I'll try to respond as quickly as possible. Oh, don't forget to be sure to check out all my other videos on solar related products, on power stations, on backup systems, batteries, all sorts of different things. I'll try to leave a link in the description below. And if you're watching this on certain devices, you'll see different links to different things right here. So be sure to check those out. And I wanna thank you for watching.